Big spoiler warning for Inscription. Play it before watching this video because it's so much better if you go in blind. There are a lot of things in this world which I like. Card games, tabletop RPGs, escape rooms, and ambiguously gendered blobs. It should come as no surprise then that Inscription has been my current hyperfixation for a couple of months now. I just love this game, from its simplistic mechanics and rich aesthetic to the sexy robot that shackles you to the table, and no, I'm not going to elaborate on that. Since Inscription has handed me such a unique and awesome template to build off, I'm obviously going to build off it. So, here I am with today's video, creating a new scribe for Inscription, themes, mechanics, and a whole deck full of cards. I've seen several people do this in various places all over the internet, and I'll link all these people's works in the description, but I'm going to go a bit more in depth, analysing the design of existing scribes and how they inspired me in making mine. The first thing I wanted was a theme. We already had beasts, death, technology and magic, so I needed something different that stood out from the other four. After a little brainstorming, I decided on the theme of alchemy, because it gave me the opportunity to include some more steampunk and maybe biopunk elements in my design. Brass components, tubes of coloured liquid, organs in jars and funky things like that. I had this image in my head of a cloaked figure with a bunch of thin metal arms that make them look like a giant spider sort of weaving a web as they deal out cards and shift game pieces, so I really tried to bring that out in my sketch. And here's the finalised look for my scribe. They sort of turned out as a plague doctor mixed with a tech priest from 40k mixed with Lady Dimitrescu and I'd count that as a success. I came up with the name Nifox by basically smashing a bunch of different chemical elements together until I got something I liked the sound of, and I also decided that their inscription tool would be a fountain pen, which they use to draw all the homunculi they create with alchemy. Anyway, with some design ideas settled, the second thing I wanted to think about was a resource generation mechanic for Nifox, something which will make their gameplay unique and also give them some flavour and personality as the scribe of alchemy. Let's quickly recap each existing scribe's resource mechanic. Leshy's beast cards require a number of your own cards to be sacrificed to play them, with more powerful creatures needing more sacrifices. Grimora's Undead cards cost bones, which are obtained whenever one of your cards dies. Magnificus Magic cards require a certain colour of mox to be on the board in order to play them. And Pier-3's Robot cards use up cells from your energy gauge. Every turn, your energy gauge will refill and the number of cells in it will increase, starting at 1 and maxing out at 6. Got it? Good. Now let's go a little bit deeper into the strategy and design of these mechanics. Every scribe has a side deck, containing all the same kinds of cards which contribute to the generation of their unique resource type. Leshy has his squirrels, which serve as sacrifice fodder for larger beasts. Grimoire has skeletons, which always die after they attack, providing you with a steady stream of bones for your stronger undead cards. And Magnificus has mocks, which, obviously, need to be on the board for you to play other cards. Pier 3 is a bit of an outlier in this case, because its side deck of empty vessels doesn't actually contribute to energy generation. It doesn't need to, because your energy fills passively. They're made useful in a different way when you load them with abilities and, later on, gems to buff other cards. So I want my scribe's resource type to be supported by their side deck. Cool. Easy enough. But there's another thing. Out of all the decks, people tend to like Magnificus Magic deck the least, and I wanted to think about why that is. In my opinion, it's this. All cards generate bones when killed, and almost all cards can be sacrificed for blood. This makes bones and blood very consistent, because you can draw these resources from pretty much any card from any scribe's deck. Energy is also very consistent, but that's because it generates passively, so you always know exactly how much energy you'll be working with on a particular turn. Mox, on the other hand, relies you on not only having a Mox gem on the board, but the right colour of Mox gem. Because there's no way of ensuring that you draw the right colour of Mox, you have a high chance of getting shafted by RNG, which is never fun. Now, I did download and play the Magnificus mod, which allows you to draw Mox from a side deck, rather than having shuffled in with your regular cards like in Act 2, and that did make it much better but it was still something I wanted to think about when creating a resource mechanic for Nifox. I'm not saying Mox is a bad mechanic, by the way, I just wanted to think about why people tend not to like it as much, and take that forward when making my own scribe. So now I've refined my earlier goal. I want my scribe's resource mechanic to be supported by their side deck, but not completely reliant on it to function. Easy enough, right? Yeah, well, that's what I thought too, until I spent a nearly a whole week fumbling about and totally failing to come up with ideas. I tried playing more Inscription to see if it sparked any inspiration, but that was a terrible idea because it just distracted me for hours on end. Anyway, after the required amount of fumbling about, I came up with this. Now you may be thinking, wow card, that sure looks a lot like the four classical elements commonly featured in Aristotelian philosophy and archaic theories of chemistry, and if you were thinking that, wow, that's a very specific thought to have, but also yes. These are the classical alchemical symbols for fire, earth, air, water, and ether, and as the game progresses, you accumulate points for each of these five elements. You spend these element points to place down a new card, and the more powerful a card is, the more element points it will cost. But how do you get element points? Well, 
Every alchemy card has an elemental alignment, either fire, earth, air, water, or a combination of those four. And at the end of your turn, each card on your side of the table will generate one element point of their type. Element points will stay in your pool until they're either spent or the battle ends. When facing Nifox, your side deck is composed of elementals, three cards with zero power and one health which are just cheap ways of banking elemental points. The player would be able to change the frequency of each elemental type, rather like the distribution of gem vessels in Act 3, in case they want a deck which only specialised in a few elements instead of all four. But hang on, I hear you cry. What about ether points? What do they do? Well, this comes back to my earlier point about cards not being completely dependent on your side deck to function, only supported by it. Ether points are generated by cards which have no elemental alignment, including ones from other scribes' decks. Ether points are like a wild card element. Whenever you place cards, two ether points can be exchanged for one elemental point of any other type. I designed it this way to make hybrid decks between alchemy cards and other scribes' cards more viable. You don't have to put all your resources into setting up good alchemy-based plays, as all your cards will generate ether points in the background for you to use in a pinch. It gives it more flexibility, which is what I wanted. So, we have a scribe of our very own and some original resource mechanics to go along with them. The last thing I wanted to do before moving on to the cards themselves was to come up with Nifox campaign gameplay. Leshy had his map through the wilderness, PO3 had the free roam through Botopia, and Grimora had this little chessboard looking thing. So I wanted to come up with something similar for Nifox. I decided on this. It's a bit like PO3's thing, but with a bit more of a handcrafted vibe to it. I imagine the player navigating through the abandoned city, finding keys to unlock certain buildings, solving puzzles, and fighting monsters that lurk inside. When it's time to battle, Nifox removes the map from the table and sets out the playing field, bringing in the elemental gauge, scales, and bell, ready for another game. Okay, time for the fun part, the alchemy cards themselves. I'm not going to go over the design of each one individually, but I'll just put them up on the screen and you can pause the video if you really want to see all their stats. In the meantime, I have a few little housekeeping things I want to address about my channel. Firstly, I want to point out that I have a Discord server. It's currently pretty small, but if you want to pop along and help it grow, then by all means do. I'm hoping to maybe run some gaming sessions there once it gets enough activity. The link will be in the description. Secondly, I'd like to thank everyone who recently subscribed to my channel. I've had some insane growth these past few weeks, and I've recently just hit 2,000 subscribers, which is just baffling to me. I'd hardly got around to processing 100 subs, and suddenly I'm at 2,000. So, thanks to a massive everyone who enjoys my videos. It's so fun to do all the drawing and brainstorming and editing, and since people clearly enjoy watching them, I guess I'll be making a whole bunch more. I'm really excited for the future of this channel, and I hope you all are too. But in the meantime, I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye!